Hello again, and welcome to another week of Bible study. Uh, every day we're looking right now at the Gospel according to John. We're going to be picking up here with the Gospel of John chapter 9, starting in verse 24. But let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that uh, you open our eyes. Help us to see you. Help us to bear witness to who you are. And Lord, help us to be fearless uh, in, our, um, in our reliance on you. Uh, Lord, because if we are rooted and grounded in you, there is nothing this world can do that can tear us up. We may be shaking, we may be battered, we may be bruised, but nothing will finally undo us if we are rooted in you. Lord, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to be upon us at this time, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're picking up in the middle of a story here. Um, in the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus has healed a man who was born blind. And uh, he has been taken to the, um, to the authorities. And one of the things that the authorities did was they asked, people were making up all kinds of stories about, well, maybe... This is somebody else, or maybe he just looks like him. Maybe he's like a long-lost twin brother, stuff like that. And so they finally come and ask his parents, and his parents say, well, we know that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But how he came to see, we've got no idea. And kind of the narrator includes a remark to the effect that they were afraid that if, because if they were to then make a strong stance about, in favor of Jesus, then they might get you know, kicked out of the synagogue. Um, and... Uh, so anyway, in any case, they, they kind of almost pass the buck on to their son to say, he's of age, go ask him. So this is where we pick up in verse 24. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, then he answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. So they said to him, what, he did, uh, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered him, I told you already, and you did not listen. Uh, why do you want to hear it again? You do not want to become his disciples too, do you? They reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he's from. The man answered and said to them, Well, here's an amazing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he hears him. Since the beginning of time, it's never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and are you teaching us? So they put him out. So, again, like I so often say with this, there's, there's a lot going on here. Um, and, and I want to kind of come start from the, the end and move back to the beginning because I want to kind of end with that beginning comment. And, and that is, so these people, these leaders are saying, we are not followers of Jesus. You are a follower of this man, but we aren't. We're followers of Moses. And one of the things that uh, Christian faith has always proclaimed is that to follow the God who spoke to Moses is to follow Jesus. We need to follow Jesus if we want to follow that God. And, and so one of the, the classic things is to say, now I realize there are people in the world who uh, do not like this interpretation of the Christians. I know there are some individual Jewish people who do not care for this because it comes off as saying you don't understand the fulfillment of your own religion because um, Jesus is this from the same God. And in fact, I've even seen a movement among some Christians to try to downplay or even uh, get rid of that way of understanding things because it comes across as saying to the Jewish people, we know your religion better than you do. Uh, when in fact, we don't actually know the Jewish religion better than Jewish people do, but our conviction is whatever, um, whatever someone else may think, one of our convictions is this God who spoke to the people through Moses is also with us in Jesus. And so uh, you have these Pharisees who are drawing a distinction between what it means to follow the God of Moses and what it means to follow Jesus. And um, it, it's not an unreasonable distinction to make because of all these historical reasons. You know, um, it's... There are lots of people who follow the God of, who follow Moses, but do not necessarily follow Jesus. What we're saying in the church is that to do the one properly means we have to do the other one too. And um, and there's no there's no question about uh, trying to convince everybody of that. That just is kind of a fundamental perspective on what does it mean to be a Christian. And um, and they say well, we don't know where he's from. And I don't know. I, I get the impression that's more than just a location issue, but he's relatively unknown to them. And, and the man who was healed kind of has um, a sarcastic response to them where he says, you know, basically, you all think that you know so much. You think you know what's going on. You think you've got a grasp on how the world works and how God works. And yet, so you don't have a, but you don't have a clue who this guy is. So you think you must be, you know, if anybody, if anybody is anybody, you know about them. And you don't know this guy, so you conclude he must not be anybody. But he says, but don't forget, 
He opened my eyes. So whether you know him or whether you don't, whether you think you know things or not, the fact of the matter, here is somebody who is doing something unprecedented, and you don't know who he is. So clearly you're behind the times. And, and he kind of has that response backwards. You know, he's saying, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you think, you clearly have missed on the point. And they get mad about this, but there's no real response to it because they can't pretend like bringing sight to someone born blind is not a big deal because it is. And so you'll notice they stop arguing about facts and they just kind of become almost name calling and they just say, you were born entirely in sins and they kick him out. Interestingly, uh, that's on there, I think, because at the beginning of the story, um, Jesus' disciples were asking um, whether it was uh, this man who sinned or someone else who sinned. And so Jesus had said, it's not the one or the other. And so here you have then not only are these leaders rejecting what Jesus has done and who Jesus is, they're also rejecting his interpretation of the facts. But all of this uh, is very interesting, but it all relies on something that happened at the beginning of this passage. And that is, they say, you know, we know, we know that this man is a sinner. So give glory to God and tell us the truth. And his response is, you know, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know, not my job. You know, I can't, I can't tell you whether he's a sinner or not. What I know and what I can tell you about is that he opened my eyes. And, and it's funny because as, as the conversation goes on, he begins to think more theologically and he starts saying, well, hang on a second. If this, guy's, if this guy's a sinner, why is God listening to him? Why is God taking orders from him? Why would God heal me at this man's command if he was a sinner? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't hold water. But the point is he doesn't even have to go that far because he can just, his, his testimony is so beautiful and perfect and a really great example biblically of what... Um, you know, kind of evangelism is for Christians. And that is, you know, he says, whether he's a sinner, whether he's not a sinner, I don't know. All I really know is I used to be blind, and now this man, Jesus, comes along and heals me, and now I can see. And that's really, if you think about it, the backbone of all helpful, authentic testimony, which is, I was one way, Jesus came along and turned my life in a different direction, and now I'm in a whole different world. And there's really nothing, there's, there's no better example than that because one, you can say, this is what my experience has been. Someone can't come along and say, well, you just don't understand uh, or, or that you didn't have that experience. You know, maybe they want to come up with an alternative interpretation for it. But if you go from being blind to being able to see, if you go from a life where, you're, where at least in your heart you know you were committed to, uh, to yourself and to, to sin in various ways and now you're devoted uh, to God and by being devoted to God, you're devoted to other people. Um, you know, there's really no, you can't, deny that that's been a change. And you don't have to answer the question of whether Jesus is who he says he is, because all you really need to know is that, uh, that he's changed your life. And that if he is who he says he is, that's not a surprise. It's only a surprise if Jesus isn't who he says he is. So I, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, if, I, if it were not for Jesus in my life, I would almost certainly, like almost overwhelmingly, I would almost certainly be an angry, militant atheist who would probably go out of my way to tease Christians at every turn. That's the kind of person that I would be if Jesus hadn't come in and changed my life. I, uh, in, my, in my kind of what comes naturally to me, I'm extremely cynical, I'm extremely sarcastic, um, and I have all kinds of character flaws, um, and at least some of them have been reined in dramatically by who Jesus is and what Jesus has done in my life. And so, you know, if someone had come along and tried to make an academic argument for why there can exist no God, whatever that is saying, what I know is my life has changed because of Jesus. My life is on a different trajectory than I ever would have imagined it being because of Jesus. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all the evidence that I need. And to be honest, that change in my life uh, is a better argument, a better witness bearing than anything else that I can do. Because I can sit down and I can say, oh, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, here's the whole history of Christian thought and all the rest. But none of it is going to hold as much water as the fact that this is what my life was like, this is what my life's like now, and it changed because of Jesus. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You don't have to be, you know, an infallible interpreter of Scripture. Just bear witness to what you know God has done in your life. And I know that that will be the strongest evidence, the strongest um, argument, the strongest evangelism you can ever do is to simply share what God has done in your life. Well, that's all for today. Uh, we'll come back again tomorrow and we will continue on with this story and continue up and finish up John chapter 9. Have a good day.